Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Job. In Job chapter 11, we hear the uh, the right or the the speech of one of Job's counselors, a fellow by the name of Zophar. Now, if you've been with me before, you know that I've talked about how the um, the counselors of Job are sharing what we would call these days half truth. There's an element in which they are very proper sounding arguments. However, there's just an, a little bit that is off. And that makes it very, very dangerous, as you understand. That's part of the reason why the book of Job is so confusing to many people. It sounds very good in one way, but if you really get down deep and look at the underlying assumptions of what is said, sometimes you end up with a different understanding than what sound theology would lead you to. And so that's the case with the, with the man Zophar. Now, there's a very interesting verse in chapter 11 of Job. And in verse 6, he, the latter part of that says, Know then that God forgets a part of your iniquity. Know then that God forgets a part of your iniquity. Now, if you read this in different translations, that particular translation is the New American Standard translation. And if you read it in different translations, it comes across just a little bit differently each way. But one of the problems of our world and one of the problems of the book of Job is that there, there seems to be this mixing of truth and, and untruth, truth and lies. And it's oftentimes a very dangerous thing. And it leads so far to say that God forgets and ignores, overlooks part of your iniquity. Now, that's not true. In one of my Bibles, I have made a footnote to myself where I said that, that if God did that, he wouldn't be God. And that's true. If he did that, he wouldn't be God. If he could overlook your sin, and if he could overlook my sin, he wouldn't truly be God because God is a perfect being. He is infinitely holy and righteous. This is the problem, excuse me, that was, that was settled and taken care of by Christ on the cross. Jesus died so that God could truly be God and be just and still justify you and me. You see, if he overlooked part of our sin, then he couldn't truly be just. If he overlooked our sin, then he couldn't have a just and righteous character because he can't be in the presence of sin and still be infinitely perfect and holy. That's the problem. And so it doesn't work. Any of the world religions, none of those will work. Only the Christian faith because in it, we have the sacrifice for our sins. No one else does. And so that's the issue that is before us. And that's what Zophar doesn't understand. He thinks that God overlooks our sin, much like a, a, a young parent would overlook the sins of a toddler uh, or a young child. Uh, sometimes, admittedly imperfect as we are, we will overlook those things. Sometimes because of our uh, fatigue or time pressure or whatever it might be, we will overlook some of the misbehaviors of our children. But when we do that, we're demonstrating that we're not truly being just, that we're not truly being righteous. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to suggest that, that we have to be uh, very, very hard-nosed and legalistic with our children that way. That's, that's not at all what I'm saying. But I am saying that if God simply overlooked sin, if that's what forgiveness meant, then he wouldn't be just. There had to be a penalty paid. He can't just overlook it. And so this is where the half-truth that Zophar brings to Job comes into play. 
Zophar doesn't understand that every sin has to be accounted for. Your sins, my sins, the minutest of those sins has to be accounted for. But that's what Jesus did when he died on the cross. That's why later on Job would say, I know that my Redeemer lives. His Redeemer is the one who purchased his salvation, who purchased his redemption, who purchased his forgiveness. And so he would later say, I know whom my Redeemer lives. But Zophar, again, doesn't understand that. And there are many people in our world today, just like Zophar, who don't have a clue that God had to send his son if he was going to redeem mankind. And so that's the, that's the idea there. In order for God to be God, what Zophar has to say in chapter 11, verse 6, cannot be. And so that's the, um, uh, that's the half-truth that Zophar wants to leave with, with, uh, with Job. And that's what I want us to understand is a false truth. Father, we ask you to give to us insights and wisdom. We pray that you would make this clear in our minds that Jesus had to die in our place and for our sins in order for us to be redeemed. So give to us consciousness of that and help us then to turn that into praise to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.